I know some of you guys have been asking, so here it is. This is my guide for the construction skill in World 3, and my goal is to help you reach that insane build rate and get your characters to construction levels in the thousands. So let's go. For all new players, here's a short introduction to the construction skill. To begin, visit your construction table in the World 3 town, located here. The first interface you're greeted with is the building tab. This is where you can construct things like shrines that boost your stats, or wizard towers used in the worship minigame, or the game-changing 3D printer that will continuously produce resources for you, even when you're not playing. So this is perfect for when you start focusing on leveling up stamps, alchemy bubbles, and vials. The other tab found here is the cogs tab, and this is where your construction journey actually begins. So start off by opening the cog shelf and place three of your characters in each slot, just like this, to start producing newbie cogs, which are the only cogs you have access to at the moment. Place the rest of your characters on the board, it really doesn't matter where right now, just get them out there. Try clicking on one of the characters that you've placed on the board to see the stats they contribute. Having your characters work, either on the board or by producing cogs, will also give them passive construction XP. Your character's construction level is one out of many factors that contribute to construction speed and EXP gains. Build rate is what determines how quickly you will produce new cogs and construct or upgrade buildings. Once you have cogs ready to claim, simply click the collect button and place the cogs on the board. Cogs have random stats and sometimes additional attributes, but we will cover which cogs to save later. But for now, just fill up the board with what you have. Besides build rate, there are two other important stats. The first one is your EXP boost for construction, which is quite self-explanatory. And the other is flag rate, which improves how quickly your flags will unlock new slots on the board. By sliding this switch to the right, you can place up to four flags on the board to start unlocking new tiles. I can't show you what it looks like, since I already have the entire board unlocked but start by placing the flags on the tiles closest to the middle, as this takes the least time to unlock. Unlocking new tiles will give you more space to place cogs, which will allow you to get even more flag and building speed. Back in the build tab, you can now start constructing the 3D printer and the pulse mage tower, and proceed from there. So, now that you know the basics, let's go through the most important unlocks and upgrades for you to focus on when pushing construction. Why not start with the two most important bonuses, the Call Me Bob and the Carpenter Bubble in Alchemy. These two bubbles complement each other perfectly and will allow you to start the snowball effect. The Call Me Bob Bubble is linear and gives a plus 2.5% construction EXP boost per level, which means you can keep investing materials into it indefinitely and still gain value. The Carpenter Bubble, on the other hand, caps at plus 5% construction speed per construction level, with a more realistic cap of about 4.9 to 4.95% between levels 2.4k and 5k. However, the first few levels are the most impactful, but try getting it to level 500 as a start. As soon as you level up these two bubbles, you will notice that your characters start gaining construction levels much faster, and thanks to the Carpenter Bubble, these levels then leads to more construction speed, which then results in even more levels. And, well, you get the point. It's the snowball effect I was talking about. Let's take a quick look at the gem shop and see which upgrades you should prioritize purchasing first. While this upgrade don't directly affect construction, if you're new to World 3, the most important upgrade you can buy in the entire game is the Crystal 3D Printer upgrade, which can be bought for 875 gems. This upgrade gives you a second slot for printing materials, which is too good to ignore. Next, we have the Sancog upgrades. This upgrade has 8 stages, with each stage giving you one Yangcog and one Jinkog piece. These are the best cogs for build rate. Then, there's the Tower Building Slots upgrade, which simply provides you with up to 4 additional building slots. And finally, there's the Fluorescent Flaggies upgrade, which boosts the rate at which your flags unlock new cog tiles. I personally didn't get this upgrade, but if you have the gems and want to speed up your construction progression, go for it. Some other useful bonuses to further accelerate the snowball effect include the Seesaw statue, which is best farmed with a Divine Knight at Blokes or Cryosnakes in World 3. 
this statue provides another great source for construction EXP gains. Additionally, the South Stamp, Pen Vial, and this Hydron Star Sign all increase your construction EXP gain even further. The construction container box in the post office is another good upgrade as leveling it increases both your building speed and construction EXP gain. You can also equip your Divine Knight with a full set of construction nobles to greatly boost their build rate. You could even take it further and give all your characters construction nobles, but it's not optimal. In any case, these obols can always be swapped out at any time for, say, a drop rate setup when you want to focus on farming instead. Other very important sources for build rate include the Equinox Fish Vial and the Turtle Vial, both of which provide a substantial boost to build rate. The Sapphire Rhinestone is another powerful source. It enhances your first building slot, giving it a significant construction speed boost, along with a golden border. If all other blue jewels are active as well, your second building slot will also receive this boost. To take this even further, the Nitrogen Atom in the Atom Collider grants you a third gold trimmed building slot and provides a percentage build rate boost to all three golden slots. To maximize your efficiency, make sure to place the most important buildings in these slots to upgrade them the quickest. And finally, unlocking the last two building slots can be done through the World 3 Merit Shop with the first and the third purchase of this upgrade each grant you an additional building slot for the total amount of 8 slots. Another major source for various construction bonuses can be unlocked through the Rift in World 4. At Rift level 16, you gain access to the Skill Mastery which provides several bonuses based on your total construction level. However, at Rift level 41, you will also unlock the Construction Mastery bonus. This bonus not only offers valuable passive stats, but also increases the maximum level of some of your buildings, depending on the total level of all your structures, which easily can be viewed here. Through the summoning skill in World 6, you can unlock a unique building speed multiplier by defeating various opponents, and this bonus is surprisingly strong. Next, let's discuss which talent you should focus on for your Squire or Divine Knight to maximize your construction progression. One thing that some players might not know is that the Strength main stat actually provides a building speed multiplier as shown here, which means you should invest points in all relevant Strength talents. In addition to this, there are several other talents that directly benefit construction by boosting both EXP gain and building speed. Another thing worth mentioning is that the all specialized skill EXP talent does not affect construction EXP gains. Now that you're familiar with the most important sources for construction gains, let's tackle the part that many players find confusing and tedious. I'm of course talking about optimizing your cogs. At the start, most of the cog board will be locked and will need to be progressively unlocked using flags over time. An optimally configured board is 12 by 8 and should look something like this. I place my three warrior based characters in the middle of the board. Some people use two characters, or just their main divine knight in the center, but I personally find that using three characters yields the best results and also looks the cleanest. The key is to focus all directional cogs with a percentage build rate boost towards the center where your characters are. This setup results in significant build rate multipliers for these characters. Combine this with EXP cogs placed everywhere else on the board and your characters will rapidly gain construction levels as well. With enough build speed, you can continuously roll cogs with no waiting time in between. This part can be tedious, but is essential for creating the perfect board. For directional cogs with a percentage build rate boost, the cap is at plus 65% build rate with the purple ultimate cogs. Meanwhile, the EXP cogs are based on your character with the highest construction level. Here's how I do it. First, I toggle the display to show the EXP percentage and then claim cogs until the first storage tab is full. After that, I remove all cogs except those with a high percentage or if it's a directional cog. For directional cogs, you will need to check manually to ensure you do not miss any with a 65 percentage boost or if they're just better than what you have. This is the perfect activity for when you're doing the worship minigame or just actively farming monsters. A quick heads up though. If you're playing through Steam like I am, the game can sometimes crash if you're claiming cogs for too long for some reason, so be careful. I'm not sure how it is on the other platforms. In any case, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate 
if you would subscribe as well. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video.